Hello AACPS teachers and welcome back to part two of our tutorial on how to create a tour in Google Earth. If you viewed part one, a recap of that, we showed you how to create a place mark to indicate uh, the various locations that people would visit on your Google Earth tour. As we created each of our place marks, we attached information in this window that appears here. Some of the examples of information we could attach are web addresses. We copied and pasted or typed text into this window as well. And we also had the option to add images. If you recall from the uh, first tutorial, you can attach links to videos, but they no longer play inside of Google Earth. Also, while we were creating our place marks, we picked the exact view. Did we want people to be taken all the way down to Google Street View so that they could look up at the buildings or other landmarks at a particular location? Did we want an aerial view? Did we want them looking north, etc.? And if you remember when we created the uh, first place mark here for the restaurant in our tour, I specifically wanted them to be able to see out over the Eastport Harbor, so I have us looking slightly north here. In addition to using our place marks, we also created paths. And I told you that you could simply uh, click on your first location and your second location, and it would draw that perfect straight line for you. But if you wanted to show them how you would actually travel from one place to the next, like following a road or a path, you could click, hold down, and draw your path. When we created our place marks and our paths, they were all collected in this area over here on the left called My Places. And then we saved that collection of My Places, and we had a tour that a student could turn into a teacher or a teacher could give to a student. They could open this file inside of Google Earth. They would see all of the place marks indicated with the icons and labels that we gave them, as well as all of the paths. And they could click to move from place to place and read all the additional information that we had added. So now in part two of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take this exact tour that you've already created and record a video that would allow you to move someone viewing your tour from the first location to the second location, to the third, et cetera, one after the other. And also for you to add narration as they move from place to place, which would add some additional information to those flags of information that we attached as we made our place marks. So the tool that we're going to use to record our video is this little camcorder icon up here, this video recorder icon. And when you hover over it, it says record a tour. When we click on this, it gives us a small set of tools that appear in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen inside of Google Earth. And you've got two buttons on this little toolbar. You've got a record button, but if you want to add narration, it's important that you click on the uh, microphone icon rather than just the record icon. So when I click on the microphone, Test, test, test. You'll notice that it's already started counting the time for my recording, which indicates to me that it is recording. And when we play it back, the first thing you should hear me say is test, test, test. So now I would already be narrating my tour for anybody that was going to view it. And my favorite way to move from place to place in the tour is actually to use them where they appear in the left hand side of the screen over here under my places. So if I double click on the restaurant, we, of course, fly to that location to the exact view that I had set when I created the place mark. We see the uh, notes of information that I added to this. We can see that link uh, to the restaurant's menu page. If we click on it, it opens in the web browser. They could view the menu and think about what they might like to order if they went to this location. This is taking a moment to load, so I'm going to go ahead and close it so that we can proceed with our tour. Once you close that uh, 
note of information if you want it back again you can simply click on it where it appears under my places on the left it comes back up we could read the additional information added here I could tell them about the view of the Eastport Harbor up here I could even zoom in a little bit closer to show them how the restaurant has this lovely rooftop deck and if we were to sit on the rooftop deck of course we could see that lovely view that's out there so the next place that I'm going to click in my my places window over here is I'm going to double click on the path that takes us from the restaurant to the museum. And I like to do this because it zooms you back out. It centers the path on the screen so that you could tell them about the exact trip that you would take from point A to point B. Now I'm going to double click on the museum and we of course zoom right down to that location the information comes up on the screen as we're traveling but once we land on that Google Street View uh, in front of the museum that we had set that information box is closed so we can click again for it to open I could tell those viewing my tour a little bit about why I chose the exhibit Freedom Bound I could tell them a little bit about uh, Sam Barry who now calls himself James Watkins etc and then when we're ready we can close this box uh, again we chose a Google Street view image of the front of the museum house. As a part of my video tour, I could even turn around and show them the rest of Annapolis that can be seen from the museum. I could double click on this yellow line that indicates where they have uh, views in Google Street View. And we could take them out to the point where they could see up into um, this harbor area known as Ego Alley, where all of the really big boats come in in the summertime, and tell them a little bit about the history of Annapolis, the market house here, etc. When we're ready, we're going to come back over to My Places, and we're going to move from the museum to the State House. And again, I like to do that by zooming out to the path so that that is centered on the screen and they can see that we're going to move from the museum up to the Maryland State House. I could tell them a little bit about the trip up Main Street, what they're going to pass on the way, etc. And when we're ready, we double click on the Maryland State House and we zoom down into it. Now at this point I'd like to tell you why I like to travel in my video tour by using uh, the place marks and paths where they appear over here in my places. I could simply double click on Maryland State House where it appears here on the map and that would also take me to the location. It would bring up the note with the information that I had attached to this. But oftentimes if you create a tour that covers a large distance, like a city that is larger than Annapolis, or perhaps you're going to move across several cities, perhaps you're going to move from Annapolis to Washington DC, from Washington to New York City, from New York City to Boston, you often can't see the next place mark where it appears on the map. So having the option to click from your My Places window on the left over here means it doesn't matter how far the distance is from one place mark to the next because all of them appear in the window on the left. So back to the tour that we're recording. Once again, I could click on this link. We're taken out to the website. This one loaded much quicker than that restaurant menu. I could tell them everything I want them to take note of here on the website, the picture of the State House dome there, etc. When we're ready, we close this web browser. We're right back to the view of Google Earth. We can zoom in if we want them to take note of something on the State House, zoom out if we want them to look at some of the buildings around the State House. And once again, when we're ready, we're going to come over here and we're going to double click on the path that we're going to follow to get from the State House to St. John's. That path now becomes centered on the screen. I could tell them that we're going to walk up this path, cross these streets, etc. And then when we're ready, this time I'll show you how you can double click right here where it says St. John's College. And it brings up that information that we had attached again. I could tell them a little bit about the picture that we'd added here, that fun tradition of St. John's College playing a croquet match against the Naval Academy every year. And then when we close this information, we're looking down at the field where they might play that match. Once again, we could zoom in closer or zoom out so that we can see all of the campus. When I'm ready to wrap up my tour, if it's a small tour like this, I could zoom them back out 
to show them all of the places that we visited on our tour, wrap up with some closing remarks, etc. And I'm going to click down here on my record button, which will stop my tour. And I'll pause this. So as soon as you stop recording the tour, the toolbar that's in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen changes. It's now a playback toolbar. This is what anybody viewing your tour would actually see on their screen in Google Earth. So they could click on play. They could click to fast forward or rewind. And of course, if they're playing, they can click to pause. There's also an option here to set it on a loop. And then the save option here, which is very important for us. We've created the tour in Google Earth, but we haven't saved it yet. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click this save icon down here. And just as it did as we were creating our notes that we wanted attached to our place marks, it pops up an information window here. You're going to name your tour. You could add links and images to your tour. So if you wanted to give them a little background information about the city of Annapolis, other locations they could visit in Annapolis, etc. And then once again, we could click and simply type or paste into this window if we wanted to add additional text. So I'm going to name my tour. I'm going to call this Annapolis Tour 2 because I actually have one here earlier from when I was practicing. And I'm going to click OK. And now you'll see that it's added this to the My Places area that we created previously. So if you remember in the uh, tutorial part one, the first thing we have to do is we have to save this collection under My Places inside of Google Earth, and then we have to actually save it to our desktop. So I'm going to quickly click, and I'm going to delete this first tour that I recorded earlier. Again, I was practicing for making this tutorial. So I now have all of my locations, all of those place marks that we created. I have all of the paths, and now I have my video tour added to this collection in My Places as well. So our first step to saving this is to come up to File, choose Save, and we have to choose Save My Places. Remember, this step is what creates the collection of everything that's under My Places right now. Then we're going to go to File, Save, and we choose Save Place As. This is going to save the entire collection to our desktop. So we're going to call this Annapolis Tour 2 and select Save. So we now have the entire collection of all of the placemarks, all of the paths, and the video tour. If I were a student creating this as a project for my teacher, I would simply give them that .kmz file that I just created. They can double click. The file opens in Google Earth. They click on Play. And they can view the tour with my narration of exactly what I wanted them to take note of at each location that we visit on the tour. Or if I'm a teacher creating this tour for students, again, you share that .kmz file with them. And when they double click, they can view your tour. And if you have a video tour attached to it, they can simply click play. If not, they can double click on each location in order to fly from one place to the next and see those notes that you had attached to it with any of your links, images, or text that you had attached. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of how you can use Google Earth to create tours for uh, students or for students to complete as a project for the teacher. Again, a great way to wrap up a unit where students were asked to read a fiction or nonfiction book is to have them create a tour of the locations where a character or the characters in the book actually traveled and visited. So enjoy using Google Earth.